Next up is topic four, photosynthesis and respiration. My advice is if you think it's a photosynthesis and respiration question, make sure that you write the formula down. Many times you'll have to identify the reactants and the products. Number one says, which dissolved substance do aquatic animals remove? So we're talking about something that's living inside of the water. Remove means that they're gonna use this or need this from their external environment for cellular respiration. Again, write down the formula. That'll help you identify what they're gonna need. Respiration, remember, requires glucose and oxygen. And then your products are going to be ATP, carbon dioxide, and water. So our reactants are on the left-hand side and then our products are on the right-hand side. This is something that we're going to need for respiration. Carbon dioxide, no, carbon dioxide is going to be a product, so we can cross that one off. ATP, no, ATP again, that's going to be a product. Oxygen molecules, oxygen molecules are an example of a reactant, so we do need that. Last one's nitrogen gas. Nitrogen gas is not listed in the products or the reactants, so we can cross that one off. Best answer choice for number one is going to be three. Base your answers to questions two to three on the information and diagram below and on your knowledge of biology. The setup below shows four test tubes. Tube one contains water only. Test tube two contains a live snail. Tube three contains live green water and plant. Tube four contains both a live green water plant and a live snail. Which compound that directly provides energy in living cells is being produced in every tube where cellular respiration is occurring? So we're talking about energy. We have to think what the energy molecule is. It's saying it's being produced during cellular respiration. So again, you already wrote down the formula. We're talking about something that's being produced from this and is providing the energy. Oxygen is a reactant, so we can cross that one off. Glucose is a reactant, so we can cross that one off. DNA, not listed in the formula, cross that one off. And then finally, ATP is gonna be my product. Remember, many times you call this usable energy. So best answer choice there is gonna be four. In this setup, which tubes contain at least one organism carrying out cellular respiration? Remember, all organisms, so that means plants and animals, undergo respiration. All organisms are going to undergo respiration. In test tube one, no respiration is occurring. Then if we look at test tube two and test tube four, both of those can undergo respiration, but um, test tube three is not included in that, and that can undergo respiration. Number three says test tubes three and four only. Um, that's not going to be correct, because right, the snail also can. So best answer choice there is going to be four. Be sure answers the questions the four through five on the diagram to the right and on your knowledge of biology. The diagram represents steps in a process that occurs in cells of many organisms. Four says identify one specific molecule used to store the energy being released. Because of that, we're looking for something that would be a product. Now, last year when I saw this on the test, I thought, hmm. What are the kids gonna think about this? What you really need to do is analyze the diagram before you even get started. So let's start. Anything that has an arrow pointing in, those are all going to be examples of reactants. Now, once I see that those are all reactants, I can see that's glucose and oxygen. Again, go back up to that formula at the top that I wrote down. Oh, now I should be able to tell this is gonna be an example of respiration. My advice is make sure you write that down so that you know what formula is actually happening here. So this picture is respiration. Next up, 
note what's coming out. They want to know what the energy is. Here I have an energy molecule, energy molecule, energy molecule. Anything that's pointing out is going to be a product. Same thing with the carbon dioxide and the water. But they want to know, what is this energy molecule? Well, I know that it's respiration. So once again, if I go up to this diagram here, the usable energy in that is going to be my ATP. So that's the answer for number four, ATP. Based on the diagram, the process of glycolysis most likely. So right here, I have glycolysis. Nope what's going in, and then what's coming out. Again, this is really, you don't need to know background information, you just need to be able to analyze this diagram here. The right answer for this is gonna be one. Begins the breakdown of glucose. Again, look what's going in. Glucose is going in. You can't tell necessarily that it's being broken down, but at this point, it's being split apart, and you produce ATP, and then whatever isn't produced into ATP goes into the next section of cellular respiration. If I go down the choices, and again, sometimes that's gonna be what you have to do for these questions. It says produces oxygen for organisms to use. Note, oxygen is not being produced from this. Energy is being produced, and then it's going into other chemical reactions. So you can cross that one off. Stores energy in molecules of water and carbon dioxide. Again, if I look at glycolysis, what's coming out? Energy. Energy, again, label that ATP. That's not it. Recycles glucose within the cells of simple organisms. I don't really see any recycling going on, right? Recycling um, would indicate that there's actually a cycle occurring here, just showing it going in, and actually different chemicals coming out. So that's not it. Six says, which structures regulate water loss and gas exchange, so things like carbon dioxide and oxygen, in the leaves of plants? <clears throat> That's going to be three, a guard cell. Vacuole is for storage. Chloroplasts are going to be where photosynthesis takes place, and the mitochondria is going to be where respiration takes place. All right, flip over. It says, a cell in a leaf of a corn plant contains many chloroplasts than a cell in the stem of a corn plant. Based on the observation, it can be inferred or concluded that when compared to a cell of a stem, the cell in a leaf. So here we have more chloroplasts. You have to think, what process is occurring inside of the chloroplast? The process that is occurring inside of the chloroplast is going to be photosynthesis. So if you have more chloroplasts, most likely you're going to have more photosynthesis occurring. Go through each question now. It says synthesizes more sugar. Change it into words you know. Instead of synthesize, change that into makes. So makes more sugar. This would be helpful if you wrote down the formula now so that you can figure out what's actually being produced. Remember for photosynthesis, that's going to be carbon dioxide plus water plus light. Over the arrow always goes enzymes or catalyst, um, and then you wind up with glucose and oxygen. So here we have sugar, here we have sugar. If more photosynthesis is happening, then more sugar is going to be produced. So I'd put a little check mark next to that, but again, my advice is make sure you read through every single statement. It says producer f produces fewer proteins. Hmm. There's no proteins in this formula, so let's cross off two. Number three says has a higher chromosome count. You can't tell that from if there's more chloroplast. And then uses less carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide's on this side. If more photosynthesis is occurring, more carbon dioxide is gonna be used by those cells. So not less, it'd actually be more. Best answer choice there is one. Which life process carried out by a green plant is represented in the diagram? Once again, follow the arrows. And in this one, they actually are trying to fool you. It says green plant. Everyone wants to think photosynthesis when they see green plant. But again, follow the arrowheads. Here we have oxygen in food. Food, something like glucose. Anything going in is going to be a reactant. Energy released is my ATP. 
Again, note the arrowhead. The arrowhead, those are all going to be my products. If I have oxygen and food going in and ATP being produced, that's going to be an example of respiration. So don't just see green plant and automatically think photosynthesis. You have to actually analyze the diagram. As it grows from a seed to a mature plant, a plant will grow taller and thicker. Which abiotic factors are most responsible for the increase in mass? So first off, we have abiotic. Remember, abiotic means non-living. If I'm looking here at number one, it says water, minerals, bacteria. That's always a sticking point. People forget it, but bacteria are living. So because of that, that can't be it. Now we're looking at the rest of them. It's talking about a plant. Now how do plants get bigger? Plants get bigger because of photosynthesis. That's how they get their food, right? That's how humans get bigger too. They eat food. Well, plants don't have to eat food. They can make their own food. Again, go up here to my formula for photosynthesis, and that's going to help me figure out what the plant is going to need, right? So we're talking about, in this case, reactants for photosynthesis. If I'm looking at the formula, it says minerals, water, and plant enzymes. Hmm. Well, they will need enzymes, they will need water, but let's keep going because there might be a better answer choice. Then after that it says sunlight, oxygen, plant receptors. Plant receptors aren't going to have too much to do with photosynthesis. Oxygen is going to be an example of a product. So that's not going to make it bigger. Then it says water, sunlight, carbon dioxide. Again, I go up here to my formula, I've got water, sunlight, and carbon dioxide. That's going to be my best answer choice, number four. So again, you want to check all of them because two sounded like an okay answer, but the best answer was four. Last one, the diagram below represents a cell structure um, in converting energy stored in organic molecules into a form that can be used by cells. That's kind of a mouthful. Remember, energy is stored inside of glucose, the chemical bonds. Then again, here it says organic, glucose, organic. Here it says a usable form. That usable form of energy is going to be ATP. Cell structure, they don't tell you to label it. Probably a good idea, though, to help you analyze it. So we have mitochondria. Remember, mitochondria has little zigzag lines in it. Also note how the arrowheads are pointing. They're all pointing out. If the arrowheads are pointing out, that indicates a product. I would suggest, once again, writing down the formula. Um, inside of the mitochondria is going to be where respiration occurs. So write down your respiration formula. C6H12O6. Remember that's the chemical formula for glucose. Um, and then on the other side we have ATP, carbon dioxide, and water. That makes this pretty straightforward. You just have to find one that has either ATP, carbon dioxide, or water in it. Best answer choice there is going to be three. I cross off one because sugar is a reactant. I cross off two because oxygen is a reactant. And then finally, I cross off four because both of those guys are reactants. So best answer choice is three. Once you've finished that and checked all your answers, you'll want to do the self-reflection again. How confident do you feel? How many did you get right? What areas maybe do you still not know? Do you not know one of the formulas? Are you not sure of what a guard cell does? Is it a little tricky to analyze the diagrams? What are your goals? What should you set aside time studying and looking over? And then were there any words that maybe you're not familiar with that you need to study? You can put those on the front sheet of the worksheet.